Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today, we have a 2003 GMC Sierra with a diesel in it, an Allison transmission. We're going to program using an old Tech 2 and old TIS 2000 disk software. I did a previous video on the same vehicle using SPS 2, if you'd rather. I'll put a link to it in the description here. And this is the old software with a Tech 2. Stand by. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, first things first. Any of the equipment that you see used in my videos is available on the website. If it's not there, send me an inquiry off the website, toolhutusa.com. That's T-O-O-L-H-U-T-U-S-A.com. My name is Sam. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to use a Genuine Tech 2 with an old version of TIS 2000 software. This is before they went to the internet with the programming software. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this video is because this software is available out there. I do not sell it. Do not contact me trying to buy this software. And also, the Tech 2s are available. Most of them are Chinese. Uh, it can be done with a Chinese Tech 2. Again, I do not carry the Chinese Tech 2s. So don't contact me about purchasing a Chinese Tech 2. These are the reason I'm doing the video is because this stuff is available and I wanted you to see that it could be done using the stuff that's available, not necessarily the stuff online. I did previously program this with the SPS2 software because the dealer told the shop that it could not be done with the GM software with the uh, because of the age and the fact that it was an Allison transmission. So I pretty much did that one just to prove them wrong. This is how I would have normally programmed this transmission, just because of the age of the vehicle and how I do things. So, stand by. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up our Tech 2 to the DLC of the truck. The key is on. We're going to go to Service Programming Systems, and we're going to request information. Again, it's 2003 GMC Sierra. I did take this video with my phone. I apologize for the quality, but I think you'll get the idea. So it is a Sierra new body style. Not real sure why they continue to call that the new body style, but anyway. Different story for a different thing. So it'll, it'll read the VIN in the ECU data, and it will pull the VIN and the current calibration information in the ECM. It does not didn't specifically tell it the TCM but that doesn't really matter so now we've got it hooked up to a laptop with the TIS 2000 software we're going to choose Tech 2 replace and program ECU and we're going to choose that we're doing it in the vehicle so now that we've got it hooked up it tells us to hook up the Tech 2 just like we've done request information just like we've done I'm going to push the next button. Again, there's our VIN. It is correct. We're going to scroll down until we get to the TCM. The old software is not in alphabetical order like the new stuff, so you got to kind of just go down through the list till you find what you're looking for. Again, I'm not going to go through this. I am reprogramming it again with the exact same software. It's interesting that from 2007 to 22, there's not an update for that transmission control module. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to transfer the data from the TIS 2000 computer to the TAC-2. So we're not programming the vehicle at this point. We're programming the TAC-2. Hopefully everybody understands that. So what it's going to do here is going to finish programming. It tells us we're successful. And now we're going to go back to our Tech 2. 
we're going to go back to service programming systems and you'll see we got a new option it says program ECU it confirms the calibration numbers and we just kind of hit next the next and OK or enter or whatever so then it's going to program the transmission control module I prefer this method uh, you don't have to worry about getting on the internet uh, anything older than 2005 with GM this is how I prefer uh, to program them we can do sixes and sevens but I think 2005 was kind of the hard break from going from the tech 2 to the to the MDI at that point so this is my preferred method on pre-05 we see a lot of stuff we can do with the tech 2 with the old software that cannot be done uh, with the test with the SPS 2 stuff so it's much more stable in my opinion it does take kind of a unique laptop to get it to work though I'm not going to go through that process either and it's going to tell us here that it's successful it tell us to turn off the key Continue. Now we're going to go back into the vehicle with, we'll just go into the diagnostic side of it. We need to do a uh, fast learn. So we're going to choose our 2003 Sierra with 6.6 six in it, 5 speed automatic, federal emissions. We're going to go to transmission output controls, and all the way at the bottom is a fast learn adapt process so we're just going to follow the procedure in here of doing the fast fast learn it does have to be 105 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius uh, it was disabled because it's not hot enough so we're going to go back up we're going to go to the data list uh, if anybody's ever done one of these Allison's they're pretty hard to get up to temperature sometimes this one's been running in the bay for about 15 minutes. So I was kind of surprised that it wasn't up to temperature. So I'm going to guess, I'm scroll through our data list here until we get to, to our fluid temperature. Again, we're just kind of scrolling through the data list see if anything stands out any reason this wouldn't go there's our fluid temperature there it says it's 91 degrees so I am going to put it in, in drive and double foot it and give it just a little bit of throttle and see if we can't warm this thing up Again, these are not the easiest transmissions to get warm. And typically, when I do these, I go past the minimum requirements. So I have sped up this part of the process. Uh, so what you're seeing in the video is nowhere as near as long as it took to do this. And I don't have the RPM on the, on the page, but I've got it about 1,500 RPMs or so in drive. And you can see that it, it still takes a long time to get warm. On a typical car, you can get this to go pretty fast. I go to about 109 degrees because you want to be able to exit out of here and go back to the fast learn adapt without it falling below that 105. And these cool off super fast. So I'm going to go back to special functions. I'm going to do it real fast here. So we So it says it's in progress. It wants it, it does it in park first and then it tells you to shift it in drive. And you will feel the uh, transmission or the 
vehicle kind of lurch a little bit and then as it idle becomes unstable while it's still in park so not real sure what it's doing I think it's fluctuating the torque converter clutch just trying to get a stall speed learned or whatever like I say I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing here won't let you for what won't let you proceed anyway until it's done it's kind of critical on these Allisons after you do the transmission control module to do this learn because they are super goofy if you go to drive them and I have seen people burn up the transmission trying to get them to learn manually this is the way it's supposed to be done says it takes several minutes and it's not I have not sped up this part of the process so it says it succeeded so now it's going to do uh, a drive and then I'll do a reverse after that and I don't know that I got the reverse but I got the drive so it says apply the brake and put it in drive I apologize that I'm kind of off the screen says the drive is completed doesn't take very long but you will feel it kind of lurch and now it'll do reverse and then it completes the reverse well, it looks like I messed up so I hope I get it back on the screen here so you can see we're doing the park calibration again I must have screwed up and put it put it in park after the drive and then you gotta start all over again doesn't seem to take as long the second time though so follow the direction on the screen now it tells you to put it in drive you don't put it in park when it's done push enter again and now it tells you to put it in reverse So the reverse calibration is in progress, and that doesn't take very long to do the reverse calibration. And then it says it was successful, just like we wanted it to, right? So that's it. That is the programming and the fast learn process using the Tech 2 and TIS 2000. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below.